Welcome to Agora Digital Art Exhibition Talk. I'm Shulez Vichelik, and today we are going to talk with Irem Choban about her residency project, which led to the Women in Proverbs exhibition. Later, if you have any questions and comments, you, can, you are more than welcome to join the conversation. Hello, Irem. Hello, and thank you, everyone, yes. for joining our exhibition opening. Okay, so let's start with a short introduction of Irem and the exhibition. Irem is an artist and also an academic from Turkey. Through her work, she tries to express the multidimensionality of the human being. So she uses multiple techniques like digital drawing, videography, photography, and motion graphics. Her residency project, this exhibition, Women in Proverbs, deals with gender issues and problematizes the representation of women in patriarchal societies. Here, as you will see, we have 11 digital illustrations and one video book that visualize the way proverbs of different patriarchal cultures depict human identity. Uh, as you all know, proverbs are very concise expressions and very effective communicative tools because of that. In this sense, if we listen carefully to what they say about women, we can understand how women are perceived in the cultures that produce these proverbs. So, uh, Iram, what made you come up with the idea of deconstructing the human image that these expressions uh, depict? Uh, in fact, uh, from the concept of equal right to life, ever since I was self aware and met people from all walks of life, I've understood that everyone, uh, and to be more precise, every creature, every living thing, should have the right to live equally. And this awareness has allowed me to cultivate a sense of empathy, and I want to tell people about gender and identity issues in the world. Women, LGBTQ individuals, children and animals suffered sexual violence and were killed. And I want to do something for all of this by using art. My material life is very strict and consists of heterosexual rules and no one is allowed to live. But we can get out. Uh, we must raise awareness. We must organize the heterosexual system in a way that is safe for everyone. But it not in a violent way, of course. Uh, this is why I started to create my artworks to raise people's awareness at the same time. Because these problems are for all of us, therefore I want to use proverbs to draw a series based on the social prejudices in the world. I want to deal with this situation by trying to reflect the second place of women in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, at this point, Minika Schipper's book called Women and Proverbs in Worldwide inspired me. I chose proverbs, visualized them and try to show the status of women in society. But I can say that this is an ongoing project, of course. I think later people also can come and visit this exhibition, right? This hub also will be updated when you create new works, right? Right, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, let's look at one of the works together, the one that depicts the back proverb, for instance. Yes, this one, right? So it is, a good wife is the best piece of furniture. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like this one particularly because it obviously objectifies women. Yes, and it's a European country that we are talking about as an egalitarian and libertarian understanding. The proverb is, a good wife is the best piece of furniture. In fact, the essential element that needs to be discussed here is that in the entire social order in which the patriarchal system is adopted, women came after men. Similarly, um, mm -hmm. in this proverb, we can see a woman compared to furniture in the house. That's why I wanted to describe the woman as a lamb, because <laughs> a woman is actually the person who enlightens the society and the child. Uh, children mm -hmm. and there's also the issue of nudity in there uh, referring to the woman being seen as a sexual commodity i drew the woman in a dress and the man uh, is naked i see yeah and proverbs are generally connotative but you illustrate their literal meanings to show that what they say is actually nonsensical this way you seem to undermine their performative power on women being <laughs> Actually, I was very really excited when I was reading Schiffer's book and wanted to make a work with proverbs. I tried to select as many proverbs from different regions of possible and drew them as they are. Although they have secondary meanings, as you said, it becomes obvious how absurd they are when I draw proverbs based on descriptions. Therefore, I want to make fun of the male hegemony that exists in this world. There are 
11 digital illustrations and one video in the exhibition with this aim. What about the video work? It deals with Turkish proverb, right? And this proverb is the only one which is not from Shepard's book. It's your addition to the exhibition. Yes, the reason why the video work is related to this Turkish proverb is that I'm a Turkish woman and I heard this proverb from a close or distant environment when I was growing up. Yes, exactly. So I wanted yes. to perform in this video art instead of drawing it because I wanted to, to be in it, actually. And maybe if you want, we can continue with the video artwork. No, actually, actually, yes, I can. Yes, I can. actually if you like, we can start the video tour. Uh, sorry, not the video, the exhibition too, but it's only Arkan, me, uh, her too, and you, so it's up to you. Okay, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, we can have a tour, actually. Uh, we can start from the first and we go uh, one by one, and we will end with the video work, right? The Turkish work is at the end of the exhibition. Yes, it's at yeah. the top of the stairs. Okay. Yes. Let's start with German one and just go one by one. Okay, let's see the exhibition together. Uh, the works are placed according to the geographical disposition of the countries of the proverbs. We can start from Europe and travel around the world and finish the exhibition in Turkey. So we can say that in a yes. way it's a backwards world tour. And one more thing, uh, I wanted to write proverbs in Turkish in the works because when this uh, idea first came to my mind. I was reading Schiffer's book in Turkish. I made the drawings in a style that includes the geography to which each proverb belongs and the characteristics of that geography. But of course, uh, the main thing was how I felt while reading that proverbs. So let's start with the German proverb. This uh, is the first work of the exhibition. And... The proverb uh, is where red hair and thrones grow, there is no good land. Uh, I conveyed the exiguousness of the proverb and actually the negative view towards human by using cold colors, as you can see. And I re reinforced this meaning with a woman with a harsh expression. And of course, I wanted to use the aurora uh, as the equivalent of my dreams to show that this uh, prejudice actually contains a hope that can be broken. We can broke this understanding. And we can continue uh, with the third one, actually, because we talk about the Dutch one. Uh, the third one is the English proverb, when woman reigns, the devil governs. Since I wanted to visualize the proverbs as they are, I used the most typical fire metaphor over the devil and, of course, the throne. And we can see the horns as well. I depicted the demons that rule the world based on the woman's fertility feature. I reinforced the meaning by drawing dark tones and a scary face. Uh, we can continue with the... Ethiopian proverbs and the girl that goes out dancing doesn't hide her breasts uh, actually in this proverb the main issue is nudity and sexuality that's why I want to make fun of the proverb by drawing three girls representing the characteristics of different races and they are naked and they are dancing she she's ready the blonde one as you can see she's ready at any moment to let go of the black dotted veil that she has been holding on to represent everything they have to wear under the pressure of uh, the society and we can continue with the congolese proverb to eat with a woman is to eat with the devil this is one of my favorite works uh, in this exhibition because it's the first work I've drawn for this exhibition series. I wanted to depict the complexity inside women uh, who qualify as witches, the multiple dimensions of the female gender, which is important for the continuation uh, of existence of humanity, shouldn't be ignored, of course. And the Brazilian one, not even the devil can handle a woman with a mustache. <laughs> uh, the proverb I love um, 
actually uh, the most uh, in this exhibition because the main subject of this Brazilian proverb is the qualities that uh, women should have. Mustacheless, wide hips, big boobs, being beautiful, etc. Because men desire women like this. That's why I drew a naked woman with a mustache and that woman can even defeat a demon with her <laughs> this unwanted mustache. She is wild and as you can uh, notice, she is uncredited. And let's continue with the Cuban one. And yes, this is one of the funniest proverbs in this exhibition. <laughs> it's because it symbolizes a complete superstition. Therefore, I created a scene in my head for this belief, just like a movie scene and visualized it. I wanted to add an authentic atmosphere as if it was a part of a fairy tale from 1001 Nights. I chose the woman's clothes accordingly. Since I wanted to uh, background of the work to strengthen the same effect, I designed it with uh, these kind of motifs. And the American proverb, a woman's hair is long. Her tongue is longer. Uh, this proverb, which is also a well-known proverb in Russia, uh, is the most metaphorical word, actually, in this exhibition. Uh, I wanted to connect these two women through the metaphor of hair and language relation. Uh, thus, the absurdity of that comparison uh, made in the proverb was revealed. There are a lot of women who have long hair and especially long tongues, of course, in the world. So, dear man or everyone who thinks in this way, uh, I'm sorry, but you cannot get rid of us. The Japanese proverb is on the outside a goddess, on the inside a witch. Uh, in this Japanese proverb, the woman who looks like a Japanese queen from the outside and has two witches on her chest, as you can notice. And with these witches, she exists in nature as a part of nature. Colors, forms, shapes all become one within each other. Actually, I wanted to refer here to the relationship of witches and nature attributed in the Middle Ages. We all actually exist and yes, we can exist together. Uh, so trying to separate it, yes, that's the understanding that will end the world. And the Russian one is the widow is like an open field. Every wind touches her. This Russian proverb is uh, actually another proverb in which women are judged on the basis of sexuality because a widow has had sexual intercourse and is now open to any man's desire. Making women objects of desire through social pressure called the hymen is one of the most important pillars of the patriarchal system. And based on the fact that every passing wind represents a man, I wanted to draw a half-naked woman actually feeling happy and free in nature. And separation of that, an important reason for being a widow, because it's important to being a widow, and her struggle to exist as a mere woman. The Iraqi proverb, the brains of a woman are in her curls, uh, this is the last illustration in this exhibition for now, of course. It's a, another fairy tale work belongs to this Iraqi proverb. And I wanted to give a desert effect with earth colors. It's a kind of a Middle Eastern reference with an overview. In the face of an understanding that completely covers the woman in the context of this kind of belief. As you can notice, she is a half covered, uh, half open woman with her hair visible partly, but still she's behind the cage. And she looks out and wants to get out because, metaphorically, this tale is not a tale that she wants to read or be in. That means that she it's not her fairy tale, it shouldn't be her tale, of course. Um, I think we can talk about the video world. Yes, it's uh, at the top of the stairs, and it's the last work of this exhibition. Let's go. And yes, the video uh, work is related with the Turkish proverb: "A woman is preferred with heart with large hips, like a meal with tomato sauce." 
I wanted to perform for this video that I don't uh, have big hips. Uh, it's the result of the woman being seen as an object, of course, being perceived as a sexual commodity and characterizing it through certain physical characteristics, just as having big boobs, large hips, etc. I wanted to criticize this too by caricaturing it. That's why the style of the video is some sort of cartooning. The reason I don't want to use music in the video is because it's not a dance performance. Here's a performance that wants to reinforce the connotation. There's a woman who stuffs them uh, with cotton and dances to be attractive because her hips are not big, just like the proverb wants. Uh, but towards the end of the video, she refuses this imposition and chooses to dance as she pleases, as she wants. Thank you, Ram. It's very interesting, actually, when you explain the works. It becomes uh, more obvious how you use the um, style and how you use the colors to undermine the um, uh, the power of these expressions, which are undervalued women actually all around the world. Thank you. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I was happy to, uh, to, to to get to work to this space for the exhibition, uh, and I, I really liked the pieces, the the art pieces, the paintings. You, uh, to, uh, as I said, Arkan Artu is the architect of this environment. Thank you, Artu, for your great work. You're welcome. Thank you, Just uh, don't hesitate to, uh, I would say, to let us know if you feel like uh, you need more. Thank yes. you, Artu, and thank you all. Okay, thank you, everyone, then, for joining us today. <laughs>